Hi guys, I'm the British WW2 man and today I've got a video on my Flash Amiga gear. So let's get started. Again, as always I'm gonna work from the inside out. So every man would have worn a pair of these, they would have been issued to him or he could have chosen to wear his own. These are long ones. So if he didn't wear these because the trousers are made of pure wool, they would have basically wrecked his legs and made him unable to soldier so would have been a hindrance so they used to issue these these are Swedish not German but the styles are virtually exactly the same Swedish crowns size company maker smart a thing for getting your whatnot out another company thing and they're just at the back these are original second world war Swedish ones even the Swedes didn't actually fight in the war. Volunteers did, but as a country they didn't. And so anyway, I'll not hold up because these are only just long dons. So yeah, you'd wear them underneath your trousers to protect your legs from itchiness. Plus if you're serving somewhere like Russia and it was winter time, it make keep you nice and warm. This is my Luftwaffe sports vest which you would sometimes wear underneath your shirt if you wanted to keep warm or you just wanted to wear it. Um, so, it's just got a, tri a triangle, triangular shaped insignia. They, you, it should have two of them, one on the front and then one on the back, but I only have one on, for the front because I couldn't find another one to purchase. Anyway, so it's double sided, the, the triangular thing is double sided. Uh, one side's black with a white eagle and this side's white with a black eagle. So, yeah, and this would have also been worn whilst they were doing PT, etc. Which should have been unlikely on the front, but anyway, so I'll move on. So these are socks. You would wear these underneath your boots, like just like normal socks basically, I don't really need to explain how you wear them. These aren't original style, but I wear them for reenacting purposes because if I don't wear them, then I'll lose basically all the skin off the back of my heels, because uh, the boots, if they don't fit properly, they rub. So in, in the uh, Second World War, they would have been used to having boots that didn't particularly fit and that were made of real tough leather so they would have been used to having it chafing so they might have been able to get away with thinner socks but you really need to have thick socks if you're going to reenact I just use these socks for reenacting because <coughs> sorry because they're just decent socks they're thick no one's going to see them but the original ones would be grey they'd have a line across here and I think another line across here white lines so that's basically that I'll move on so this is my shirt it's a modern RAF one which I've managed to modify to be virtually almost the same apart from I forgot to take the label out anyway so it's got hooks here these are for um, shoulder boards which are basically epaulets and again here, um, and buttons to hold them in place, uh, pockets on the front, and it only does up to here, four buttons, I've taken the sleeves up because they were too long for me. So that's the shirt uh, you could wear uh, when you jumped, you would be wearing a shirt and something called the Flieger Blues, which I don't have. But I've heard from veterans that what they used to do is they used to throw away their Flieger Blues because, well, when they were in Normandy, because it was just so hot and they just wear their jump smock over the top of their shirt. And then when it came to winter of 1944, they were like, oh dear, we're freezing cold now because we dumped our Flieger Blues. So, moving off shirt, I'll move on to something else. So these are my M35 
Stone Green Trousers there, they're marked issue, but the the first Amiga were issued with lots of Wehrmacht kit, so it's not completely inaccurate from what I've heard. It's got a bit of a stain here, but it doesn't really matter. And so that's basically then they were except did or designed in 1935 and got a pair of braces here. Probably not original braces, I think. I think these could be post war, but almost exactly the same flies front what should be a pocket here but it's just a button pocket here pocket here and that's basically it so it yeah, got a bit of a hold here but doesn't particularly matter so that's basically them they were used up until 1940, I believe, when they introduced the M40 trousers, which are exactly the same, just they were field grey, feldgrau, rather than stone grey or steingrau. So, yeah, this is probably be... But they were also there with lots of stocks left of this steingrau material. So they still made these up and into 1941 and some rare cases 42 mainly just early 41 they were made up until because they wouldn't just say oh we're changing to M40 trousers we need field grey we're just gonna throw all this, uh, stone grey trousers away because it's a war you needed to p use all of the resources you had so they just have continued making their M35 trousers so that's basically it. Um, I'll move on now. These are my Type 2 jump boots. They are later than the first type because the first type jump boots they had a thing that went up the side here. Uh, the laces went up the side rather than the front. Uh, I'm sorry but I don't know the reason why. Uh, it'll probably be out there on another YouTube video. So yeah, these are post -war Doc Martens, but they're almost exactly identical, which I've checked in there. The only difference is that there's a little row of stitching across there. That's the only difference. So, anyway, so that's them. They would have been worn on jump. I also forgot to mention that, that you would need decent socks, because when you jumped, you would, and you land, if you landed badly, then if you didn't have just that extra little bit of padding underneath um, you could hurt your foot uh, if you landed badly whereas if you had decent socks then that might have slightly cushioned the blow a teeny bit more than it if you had thin cotton socks so yep that's basically them there's a couple of people have done um, some other videos on YouTube and if you want to view them, it's fine. So, I'll move on. This is my Splinter B Jump Smock. It's later war variant, but it's still nevertheless some very good quality. It's made by Meltec, it says here. They make some incredibly good Second World War camo, German camo stuff. So, anyway, they're, they're a very good company. It's got four pockets, one here, one here, and then one here and here and they're so that the Falschamiga could carry lots and lots of stuff in case he was blown away from his unit whilst he was parachuted in to wherever he needed to be and he could survive on his own because they usually Falschamigas jumped without their weapons and the weapons would be in, in a weapons container but some parachute Falschamiga, sorry, did jump with their weapons, but most of them would have only been armed with a pistol and possibly their bayonet, so, and a flare gun as well, so I'll show you this, so, it's got leather tabs here, they hang down like that, so you wouldn't have to be bothering um, fumbling around trying to open this if you need to get, get something quickly, such as 
stove or fire lighter or knife or whatever. So, yep, there's the inside of it. Uh, very good. I've got this at, at a military affair. Uh, so, the arms, they've got a special design in them. Get it to open. Oops, so here you got this which basically stops the sleeves from flying up when you jump. So after you've jumped it doesn't your sleeve won't be flapping around. These are elasticated by the way. Pretty decent quality elastic. There's bits in here if the thing was too large for you, you could take it in. And on the back, on the bum, right bum cheek, it's got a, a holster for a flare pistol. A very pistol probably. So or something like that. And they would have that in case they were stranded somewhere. They'd be able to shoot up a flare and then their friends would be able to see it. Also, just for combat, um, if you're fighting in the dark, or you're wanting, wanting to surprise an enemy, you just shoot a flare in the air and it illuminates the whole area. So, yeah, it's also got this, which is basically poppers, around here. And that does up, and it does around your, goes around your legs, so that once you've jumped, this doesn't do this and get in your way and get tangled up in your shoot. It's got fake RB number and a number one. So, yep, it does it on both legs. I'll show you the inside now. So, on the inside, there's drawstring here. That's in case it doesn't fit to you. Uh, you could just pull it and it would tighten up around your waist. Got hooks here, I believe they're for uh, belt hooks, uh, which are pretty awesome. So it's got the backing for the very pistol is uh, quite nicely lined. I think that's probably just so that when you landed, if you landed on your bum, it wouldn't be very painful because you wouldn't have the pistol digging into you. So that is basically the inside of the jacket. It's quite well lined, very nice material. So, that's that. I'll move on now to um, other equipment. This is an M43 ski cap. It was issued to the Varshamiga because it was just mass produced by the Wehrmacht, um, but in a different color, it was field gray, obviously. And it sometimes varied in shade uh, due to which manufacturer produced it. Uh, so, yeah, it's got the trapezoid with the Luftwaffe Eagle and the, and the Reich uh, roundels, which is blue, black, white, and red. And it was designed originally for ski, cro ski troops, but it was eventually adopted for general purpose, general issue. So, it's got something very awesome that it does, which I'll have to pause the video to show you. So it does this, this is only for cold weather you do this. It's got a, a piece of cloth that comes down here, that protects the back of your neck, the sides of your neck, and bit, the, the little bit underneath your chin. Uh, it doesn't particularly fit this mannequin head, but I'm just using the head as an, an example to display it on. So, that is that it, the way I was showing you before was just the normal way, way that it would be worn if it was just cold. So I'll move on to show you something else about it. Here it's got um, hooks. Here these are basically just be for hanging it up if you wanted to, and it has them on both sides. It seems a pretty difficult way to hang it up, but anyway. So that's that. That would be worn when in combat. 
Uh, but if you were had a helmet to hand, then you'd wear this usually folded up in your belt like that, or in your red bag. It's got the blue buttons as well. I think I might have said that it was for cold wear, it'd be worn like this, it'd be basically for warm wear, it'd be worn like this, basically for any other type of weather, but when it got snowy and blizzardy and icy, it'd have the flaps down on the sides. So, that's the M43 ski cap, move on to something else. Okay, I know some of you guys are going to scream, why have I got a first from a helmet cover on a BMW helmet, but I'm just doing this just to show you, basically, I got this, um, which is a Splinter B uh, Falschermiger helmet cover and as you can see I put it on my Wehrmacht helmet, it doesn't particularly fit because it's not designed for the Wehrmacht but so what, it's actually a Spanish Civil War helmet but it's literally the same as the Wehrmacht one. Anyway, so yeah, that's that. Um, it's got Splinter B button. These are uh, hoops, foliage loops for having foliage in to help camouflage you even more. So, that's that. And it's got a chest drop. Anyway, so, that's the Raymond helmet's just gonna have to kind of stand in for me until I get enough money to buy a, Felsch a replica Felsham Eager helmet. Obviously, not an original because they're like £10,000. Anyway, so, yep, that's that. Um, I have seen a couple of photographs of um, Luftwaffe wearing uh, Wehrmacht style M35 style helmets, but it was wasn't that commonly used. It was mainly the M30, I think it's the M38 or M36 Fallschirmjäger helmets that was uh, mainly worn by the Fallschirmjägers. So, yeah, I'm trying to save up for a proper Wehrmacht helmet and a proper Fashimiga helmet, so... Yeah, that's basically it. I'll move on to the webbing. This is my Splinter B Fashimiga uh, K98 bandolier. So, yep, yeah, each of these sections would be able to hold uh, 10 rounds, I believe, for the Mauser K98 or any other Mauser-style rifle. Or any any real rifle apart from maybe the M1 Garand. So anyway, because if you pick one up, because I've seen plenty of pictures of Falcon Eagles, um, say with the brain guns that they just picked up off dead British troops, and the plus about that is you kill a British soldier and you'll be able to take his ammo. Anyway, instead of having to wait for resupply from your own units. So yep, I've got one strip clip of five rounds, Mauser, eight millimeter or seven point nine two in strip clip. This strip clip actually fits my my Mausers apart from uh, opposed to my other ones which don't. So I'll move on to weapons later on. These have got hooks here, well not hooks but like things so what you do is you'd slip the belt underneath here, equipment belt, wedding belt and you do it up like that and that would basically just hold the bandolier in place and stop it from locking, <coughs> pun, sorry, rocketing around um, and generally getting in the way. So I'll move on to webbing now. I've got to say that it has one on either side. So, so here's the standard webbing. This is almost the same as infantry webbing. The only difference is the uh, uh, it, the Luftwaffe used to be issued with brown, but as the war progressed, they used to be issued with black because it was just easier. So these are original uh, K98 ammo patches. You might not be able to see it, but I think it's there. Just where my finger is. There used to be a weapon amp stamp there, uh, but it's just been rubbed away. That could be blood, I'm not sure. 
it looks like it might have been at one stage um, and so does it here uh, so and the, I think the eagles are uh, more almost more visible uh, it's there you just about to see the top of the wing anyway so they they've rubbed off with time so so you can see the right arrow pouch is in a lot better condition than the left one I because when I, I bought these that one felt a bit completely that one luckily stayed intact anyway so they could hold 10 rounds each of 7.62 92 rather ammo